It's Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers with tips and advice on landscaping and gardening. Here's Fernando Martinez. Yes, I am Fernando Martinez of Chaparral Pavers, your local landscape contractor, local paver company, hardscaping, softscaping, all that fun stuff. This is the show where you get all your landscaping advice and tips and gardening and pruning and fertilizing, which is exactly what I want to talk about today. I want to get, um, I want to get your mindset into after you've landscaped, you've let things, you know, kind of grow in a little bit. When you do a brand new landscaping project, everything is beautiful, pristine, you know, the plants are small, there's no new reason to check the drip system. It's brand new. You just got done putting it in or the sprinklers and you know, all your areas are looking really good. And you get the good part about that is you get a good long, um, you know, at least a year, year and a half, depending on when you plant of time where you don't have to do anything at all. The garden just takes care of itself. Everything's looking really nice. You get that new fresh look for a long time. Now, once you, you get by that year and a half or so, two years, if you haven't been doing, you know, your due diligence and your maintenance and the fertilizing and the pruning and, you know, checking the watering and making sure then things can get, start to go awry. And that's when you can really, especially um, if you've made a big investment or however much money you've spent on fixing it up and getting it ready, uh, you know, to have your yard look really nice and your home look beautiful and gorgeous it's you, you can actually start to detract and lose uh some of that investment that you've taken all this time and energy and effort to put in and you know grab a hold of so i, I had an experience today i went back on one of our clients jobs it's been about a year and a half since we've done their landscaping and i was i was just touching base with them they I thought they had possibly a leak in the drip system it turned out just to be a little one of the couple of emitters or were kind of squirting out but the bottom line was every I was just blown away by how much everything was blooming, how everything was you know gorgeous and just really had filled in. You know, I don't get to always you know a lot of these jobs that we do are in backyards, so I don't always get to go back or I can't just like drive by and look and see how how do they do a year, two years after. And every once in a while, I do get the advantage of being able to do that. Either we go back and work on that job again. Or, you know, like I said, in this case, we were just checking to make sure there wasn't any leaks, keeping that relationship going with that client. And so it just occurred to me that, okay, you know, what do people do when they're a year into it? You know, how do the plants look? How are they responding? What have you, you know, life gets busy. Was I fertilizing, you know, the whole time or not? Or, you know, maybe just um, infrequently and not consistent with it. So... I thought today's radio show would be a good idea to kind of go over that, go over my experiences with it, what our clients' experiences are, and how it affects what you would do in your yard and and, and kind of go through that process with you. So the absolute number one thing that I can tell immediately when I go back on some of these jobs and I see them a year, year and a half, two years after, is whether the client has been fertilizing or they have not been fertilizing. And the I tell people this all the time there's like it's there's two groups of you know jobs out there that I see and two categories of the clients who don't fertilize and the clients who do fertilize and so instead of getting too bogged down on what do I feed how do I feed do I do the you know water solubles like the miracle grows do I do the pellets you know the triple 15 20 whatever or do I do those tabs that you can put down that, you know, supposedly last a year, they have, you know, slow release, three month, six month, nine month fertilizers. Do I use the spreader or the hose and sprayer? There's so many different ways of fertilizing. And what I say is don't worry so much about how to feed, what to feed, what the numbers mean and all this. And we're going to go over that today too. Um, but I wanted to talk about that. The fact that if you get at least are in, the group of people that fertilize, you're already way ahead of the game. Whether Even if you're inconsistent with it and however you're doing it, it's always going to be better to do something rather than nothing. And when you don't fertilize at all, 
And I go back and they're saying, well, you know, the plants just, they don't look as good and vibrant. They're not blooming like they were when you left, you know, after the last first few months when they were in the ground. My first question always is, what are you fertilizing with? You know, and if the answer is kind of, well, I don't know, or was I supposed to be fertilizing, you know, it, it's pretty obvious. So I, but just by looking at the yard, I don't even have to ask the question, you know, are you fertilizing or not fertilizing? Cause it's, it's so obvious the, the size of the plants, I can tell almost immediately. And that's one thing, especially if you're you're trying to get something to grow like a hedge or a division between you and your neighbors. We just got done uh, finishing a job where I planted some polygala grandiflora, beautiful sweet pea shrubs all along the side of a neighbor who has a pool where they have a wrought iron fence. So you can see right through to their pool. And okay. So they're, I tell them they're going to get 12, 15 feet high. They're going to be six, eight feet wide. If they don't fertilize and if they don't, you know, add the extra watering and really, you know, put the effort and energy in there over the next few years, it could take five years to get to that size. It could take a couple years and they could almost be there literally. So, um, I want to bring you in on this point too, Jonathan, and you know a lot about fertilizer and I want to get into the kind of the nuts and bolts about it because. I, and I mean this, get in the group of people that are fertilizing and not out of the group that it just doesn't feed or, you know, doesn't think about it. And again, doing something, even if you're not sure, go a little bit light, you know, don't over fertilize, but just do something, get a can of miracle Grow, get some pellets or see what's left over in the garage, even if it's, you know, old or which, something. Which brings us to a good point yeah. because... You know, a lot of people think fertilizer is just cow manure and you throw that over, uh, all on the lawn and you're, oh you're ready to go. <laughs> that <you know>? smell. <laughs> um, exactly. And that's more like manure. That's an organic. And I want you guys to realize something. Fertilizer is non-organic. It is scientifically made. It's not something that, you know, is produced naturally. Right. Um, it couldn't be both. I mean, there there's a organic fertilizers. And, and if you're doing like a vegetable garden or something, you know, edibles or where it really matters, then you can get into organics. That would be a whole nother exactly, show. Exactly, exactly. But what we're talking about today is, is the chemical fertilizers and the easiest way to keep a brand new landscaping looking really good for a couple of years. So what I want to do, and I want to use your expertise on this, is to go into, because there is a lot of questions. Once you do get in that group of people who are fertilizing, what do I fertilize with? So first off, the I think one of the most important things when fertilizing is to look at the NPKs of a bag. That's going to tell you a lot more information than anything else. So okay, what I mean what by, do, yeah, by mean NPKs, by, yeah. and I'm getting to that point, right, please is <laughs> uh, nitrogen is the N, the P is phosphorus, and the K is potassium. Now, one of the easiest ways to remember what each one of those things does is Top, down, all around. The N is top, the the P is down, and the K is all around. What that means is if you're looking to green up your grass, you want it to be really green, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a high nitrogen content in the bag. I think somewhere around 18 to 20% is, is sufficient enough, and you're going to need a lot of water. A lot of people don't realize that if you don't put water in your lawn and you just put a tremendous amount of nitrogen, you're asking your lawn to basically green up and it doesn't have the main vehicle to, to process the nitrogen in the lawn. Um, so I always look for something like that. A good balance for, for a lawn fertilizer is a, is a high nitrogen, uh, 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 me, medium phosphorus, the P, and a potassium could be, you know, pretty low or a 10 or so, I would say. Yeah, so when you look at the bags of fertilizer, we don't want to lose some of the non not so advanced gardeners, um, there's three numbers on there and that's the NPK that he's talking about. And so, and they're always in that order. Nitrogen will always be the first number. And it's, it's easier to pay more attention to that just because the, the phosphorus and potassium, the last two numbers, you can't really burn with, you know, when they talk about putting too much fertilizer or be careful what you do, it's really that first number that can do the damage if you put too much and you're absolutely right. The lawn should have, um, the higher in the nitrogen, but what about the plant material? So when we're talking about plants, uh, I like them all to be the same number all across. So like a triple 20, 
uh, is really good for roses. We always recommended triple 20 for roses because it was just an even number and it, it, it helped the flowers just bloom. And I mean, they grew like crazy. And what I like for roses and plantings is a water soluble product. What that means is regular fertilizer or the most common fertilizer is pelletized. And, um, you know, you're, you're using a spreader to spread it with a water soluble fertilizer. You're putting in a scoop. So it's more along your lines of miracle grow, uh, and you're dissolving it in the water and then throwing it out in your garden. Yeah. So for instance, your miracle grow is a 15, 30, 15. Those are the numbers in, and what they are basically is ratios. So a 15, 30, 15 is a one, two, one ratio. So you're having a little bit more, you're having twice the, the amount of phosphorus than you are of the nitrogen and the potassium. But what that does is that really helps the blooms. So people are looking for flowers and, and so, okay, you can say 20, 20, 20 for roses. You could say 15, 30, 15 for roses. And that water soluble, it's it's going to do just as good of a job. And, you know, what I use on my roses is a rose systemic. And that has an insecticide in it as well. So I kill two birds with one stone on that. And my roses are gorgeous this year. They've just been amazing. The, the when, when people drive by my house and they see all the blooms and the lilacs are flowering and the, the parrot's beak is blooming. I've got some carnations that, that we bought at a nursery last year. And there's things are incredible and flowering like crazy. My bulbs are coming up and a lot of it. I credit to just going out there pretty simply throwing a pelletized fertilizer out, watering with the water soluble occasionally. And you know, trees, let's talk about trees. What, how do we fertilize trees? Trees are, it depends what you're treating. If you're treating an avocado or a citrus, you can typically use the same type of fertilizer for both of those trees. Myself, I liked, uh, a product called Grow Power, and it always had low numbers, and it seemed to to have worked really, really good. A lot of the the clients that we would recommend that to would come in raving about how well their citrus fruits are doing and how the avocados are doing great. Um, and that is going to be pelletized. Um, another option, if you're dealing with palms, they make these spikes that basically dissolve over time. And, you know, it's, it's about a year, I want to say, or they do mm-hmm. these uh, best tabs is another one yeah, best where tabs. These, these, these little tablets or best packs that you put around the plant. Um, a lot of commercial properties will have that when you're doing two, 300 plants or so, you'll put a best pack there, water it in. And over time it's fertilizing and helping that plant get all the nutrients it needs. So there's plenty of different options besides pelletized, besides uh, water soluble there's tablets, there's, there's packs, there's spikes. So, you know, it's almost limitless what they've, what they've come up with. It really is. And it, and it can be, uh, intimidating, it and, could. you know, and you have to be like, okay, I'm thinking I'm going to be a scientist and a nitrogen. You can even get into what types of nitrogen, you know, nitrate, ammonium, and you know, water soluble, water insoluble. So you've got to kind of be a little bit of a chemist and you have to at least, you know, read the bags and instructions. If you don't know and you're not sure, the best thing that I call, you know, you can kind of do is, is what I call the dummy lights. You know, it's like it, it's not the best way to fertilize, but it is a way and it will help you kind of steer you in the right direction. So, you know, when the change, change oil light comes on in your car, you know, all the time change the oil, but... Like when you read a bag and it says citrus food, it's going to be a ratio that's good for citrus. If it says rose food, it's going to be a ratio that's going to be good for roses. And if it says lawn fertilizer, you know, obviously you don't want to put lawn fertilizer on your rose bushes. So that's what I call the dummy lights. You can use those to a certain degree and read the bag carefully so that you get the amounts correct. So, you know, if it says one scoop per gallon of the miracle Grow, two scoops isn't better. And in fact, what you can do is maybe even go a little bit less and you can do it more often. Um, that's one thing we, we, we can talk about too, is, is the length of time the fertilizer are going to last and, um, how often we need to do that. But we're going to take a quick break and get a word from our sponsor and we'll be right back. If you're thinking about putting in a new pavers patio or a paver driveway, Call Chaparral Pavers, 805-588-6917. The best paver installer on the Central Coast. Check out their portfolio and customer reviews online. 
I love to come home.com. That's Chaparral Pavers, 805 588 6917. And on the web, I love to come home.com. And we're back. Last we left off, we were going to talk about how long uh, you can wait between fertilizing applications. Right, right. And I think the most, the most common answer is every six months, you know, fertilize. But I think. If we evaluate what we're putting down, there's different types of fertilizers that last a uh, duration from six weeks to eight weeks long. It's kind of like like when we say, how, how can you bid this job? Oh, it should, you know, how much does this job cost? Every job is different. Every fertilizer is different. Is. So you can't say fertilize every six months, fertilize every three months, fertilize, you know, every two weeks or whatever, because it depends on what you're using. So what we're going to give you is a couple of tips here so that you can evaluate how long you should wait between fertilizing. Right. So one of the products that I'm going to talk about uh, is going to be a coating process called Enflex and X-Coat. What that means is that they're coated with a product to help them last longer. So it's almost like a jawbreaker. That's the best way I could describe it. Pretend yeah. a jawbreaker is, you know, a fertilizer pellet. They make those anymore? <laughs> they sure do. You got to you, you I gotta remember look hard. it's a it's a that's a good visual because I I do remember jawbreakers yeah, You're bringing yeah. back some childhood memories here. Yeah. So, with a jawbreaker, you're basically licking layers off, if you will. Some jawbreakers last longer, some don't. Well, that's what they do with these pellets is some of them can even go up to 12 weeks. And that's what these manufacturers have been trying to do. They're a little bit more expensive, but how much is it going to cost somebody to do two applications in a 12-week period rather than doing it one? It's like what yeah. we talk about all the time. You do it right the first time. If you don't have to do it over and over again, is it really more expensive? So if I bought a cheaper fertilizer and used twice as much of it, if the other product isn't twice the price, then it's actually, the, in some cases, the influx yeah. could be cheaper. And I mean, if you think about it, over the, soil, time. the soil, water's going to go through the soil and it's going to take those nutrients and the plant is going to take some of those nutrients and use them, but some of them are going to go to waste. So a fertilizer that takes longer and goes, goes you know, a duration of 12 weeks is going to take those nutrients and it's going to slowly release them. And that's what they call a slow release fertilizer. You're absolutely uh, totally right because it also can be washed away with water. Exactly. Yeah, and when you, when you, I've seen people fertilize and you say, make sure you water after you fertilize. And they're thinking, well, I'm going to water heavy. I'm going to water it in. And if, especially if you're not using MP rotators, which some of these, you know, slow uh, flow heads that we talk about on different shows, um, if your water is coming out really fast and it starts to flood it, and the fertilizer hasn't dissolved all the way, exactly. it, it can move around, it can exactly. be washing down the street. Um, it's not doing you any good, the environment any good. And you know, it's not going what your intention is into the grass. And I think a lot of the times I have clients ask, well, is it going to harm my dog? Is my dog going to chew it up? Uh, you know, once it works its way down to the soil profile, the top layer your dog is going to have a very hard time, you know, digging down and then just grabbing the fertilizer and eating it. I mean, I don't think no. out of all the time that I've recommended it, I've never had anybody say my dog got sick no. off eating fertilizer. No, I, and same with me. I've been doing this a long time and there's been no ill effects. I mean, you'd have to basically get into the bag or have, you know, a clump. If you left a clump of pellets and he licked it there or something, because even the, the coatings that they use, uh, some of them do have warnings on there as to, you know, what I don't know what they're coating it with, a sulfur or this or that or whatever. But, um, you know, wear gloves. You should be wearing gloves and a dust mask anyway. I, I mean, agree. You know, if I agree. If you talk about, especially like what I was talking about earlier, doing it with the Rose Systemic, it has an insecticide and a fertilizer. I always put rubber gloves on and I try either if I have a dust mask or don't do it on a windy day. And, you know, and water it down after. Um, also, if you're doing the, the weed and feed, a lot, very popular. Scott's weed and feed, you know, they want to spray that out in the, on the grass to kill the weeds. Well, don't forget, there's, there's an herbicide in there. And so that, if you breathe that in, it's usually a fine dust. The pellet exactly. fertilizer exactly. Are, are bigger and heavier and they're not as dusty. It's usually the chemical that... And a good quality fertilizer, you're going to get a lot less of that dust residue in the bag. A good quality fertilizer, you're going to get more of the pellets. You're not going to get as much crushed 
uh, you, urea or sulfur or anything like that. And the, well, if it's homogenized, I know we're throwing a lot of terms at you guys today, but this is a, <laughs> kind of an advanced. It's show. not your milk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, uh, what that means is all the nutrients, the NPK, the micronutrients, which I always, you know, because once you start getting advanced and you really you start dialing in on these fertilizers, I also look for micronutrients on top of the NPK. Exactly. And if you have homogenized pellets, and that's a key word, and it'll say it on the bag, homogenized, um, that means that all those nutrients and all the micronutrients, everything are in each pellet. Yes. They're not sitting yes. at the bottom of the bag and you're trying to mix the bag and the, and the dust. And exactly. so again, it goes back to value. Okay. Which, those those which types of fertilizers. Which brings us to a good point here. Yeah. A lot of these bags are going to give you instructions of how much to put down. It's going to say, hey, if you have this spreader, this spreader, or this spreader, and it'll give you five spreaders. I think a lot of the times people ask me this question, and I think it'd be a good question for you to tell the listeners, uh, give them an answer, would be... How much do they put down uh, a pound? I mean, how much coverage or, or what are they looking at? I mean, does it depend on the nutrients? Yes, it it, it does. And that's why we always say it, it, there's no, you can't just, you know, especially on a radio show sitting at one size fits all. Here's what you do. It'd be too easy. It's like you're setting your clock on your timer. I wish I could tell you 10 minutes every other day, this station, whatever. It just doesn't work like that. But when it comes to fertilizers, this is what I do personally. This has been my own experience. What I do is I go out there and I measure my lawn and you have to, it, there's no way to calculate how much to use if you don't know how much exactly. area you have. Exactly. So what I do is I go out there and I measure my lawn and I say, yeah, it's a real simple measurement, length times width. And you get, you measure the length, measure the width, you do multiplication and that's how many square feet you have. So if I had, you know, a 10 by 10, that's going to be a hundred square feet. If I had, you know, a thousand square feet, what it's going to have a rating on there. And usually what it is, is it six pounds per thousand square feet. So if you have 2000 square feet of lawn, you're going to use 12 pounds. If it's a 25 pound bag, you're going to use about half a bag. If it's a 50 pound bag, you're going to use a quarter bag and that goes per feeding. So if you want to feed, you know, if it says every six weeks on the bag or it tells you, you know, it's going to last about a month, then every month you're going to use, uh, or every, you know, probably I would say every two months you can use a quarter bag of a 50 pound bag. So that, uh, that bag will give your lawn four feedings and, and you can gauge by that. And that way you don't have to look at the setting of the spreader and there's a uh, out or whatever. Another thing that I did, which I don't know, maybe it's kind of weird or whatever, those whirly bird spreaders. Yeah. I measured and I took uh, a scale and I tried to figure out how many pounds is in one whirly bird. That's actually a good, so good, good idea. It was, it was turned out it was three pounds for the one that I have. So I knew that every time I went in that bag and scooped a, a scoop of whirly bird, I had three pounds in there. Nice. And so if I know it's that will, if six pounds per thousand square feet and you know, hopefully you don't have to be a math genius. That's the, my little spreader will cover 500 square feet because it's half of the exactly, six pounds. Exactly. So um, those are little tips of the trade that you can use to calculate, to help you. And whatever works for you, use that. You know, we figure once once you get it, because once you realize, okay, your, your lawn size usually doesn't change very often. So once Exactly. You, and I just, what I do is I have a little notepad that I put up in my shed and it says right there, front lawn, this many square feet, back lawn, this many square feet. And then I know that, you know, this spreader three pounds, holds three pounds or whatever, you know, and then you get kind of get this little norm. Now it's a little bit different when it comes to shrubs and, and you know, when you fertilize what, you know, you're probably going to get maybe a pound to a pound and a half, depending on the size of the shrub. So a large shrub would get maybe a handful to two handfuls. And then, you know, like a larger bush or a tree, you could put three or four handfuls and you want to spread it all the way around evenly around the base of the plant and all the way out to the tips of where the plant is growing because you don't, you don't want to put all the fertilizer up against the trunk. And so if the bush is six feet wide, you should have a six foot ring all the way around yeah, the agree. plant with, with, where the fertilizer goes. And because those, that's where the new roots are. They, the, what happens in the underground with, with root systems is you get these little feeder roots that come out and they, they're looking for, for water. And as the plant's growing, that, that root system it never stops rooting in. It just keeps rooting in and keeps looking, keeps seeing where there's going to be water, where it's going to grow. Am I going to have big roots on the surface if you're shallow watering? That's why they tell you the deep watering, you know, it gets it to go down. And so when you try to time it 
when the drip comes on and then also water with the hose. Don't ever rely on a drip system to water your plants in after you fertilized. It doesn't exactly. work like that. That's they a just, good point. They're just little emitters on either yeah. side of the plant. And so what I do is I go out there and this is my personal experience and I like to do it and I, I, I wash off the leaves because everything's a little dusty. Exactly. You, know? you exactly. hold it down the back patio and I wash all the leaves off, especially my citrus trees. They get a lot of dust and dirt and it just... You know, I go in there and I, and I blast them. If I see any bugs or webs or whatever, I can just, you know, get kind of a high pressure on them, throw the fertilizer around there, and then really soak them in. What I do is I start on one side of my yard, and I water everything in, and when I get to the end, I start over again because now the ground is a little bit moist, and the fertilizer started to break down a little bit, and then I go through and I water one more time, and you can do that up to three times and really push that water down and do a deep watering. That's a great, great point. Uh, I think another question that most people have is, is there a best time to fertilize? And is there different fertilizers for different seasons? And the answer to that is yes and no. There are multiple fertilizers. One of my favorites to use around the cold season is going to be a nitrogen-based a high nitrogen based fertilizer, something like a Nitra King with a high nitrogen level. Yeah, and a fast um, nitrogen. Exactly, a fast release that'll give me that quick green through the winter. Uh, water that in plentiful. I think that's also a good thing. Uh, another one more thing that kind of coincides with fertilizer since we're talking about it is a trimic. Okay, yeah. that's T R I M E C. A trimic is a really safe way to treat weeds in a lawn, and it usually comes pelletized with fertilizer. So you're, right. it, it's what they call a weed and feed. Yeah, that's exactly and I think you should elaborate on that. What What are some of your favorite things about that fertilizer? Well, weed the, killer? the first thing I want to say about it and, and it, because it's in the fine print and I think it should be right on the front of the bag and it should be in big giant letters. You only use that no more than two times per year. Period. That's a great point. You cannot, you don't do that every time you fertilize. That's not what it's for. Um, and I worry because it's it's on the back of the bag and it's really fine print. Exactly. And, and, and I used, when I, I used to work at nurseries years ago and when I sold it, it Trimex has been around a long time. It has. And when I would uh, sell it, I would always make sure to tell people that no more than two times a year, no more than two times. Oh, really? And they, their faces were like, they didn't know. You know exactly. They didn't use it every time. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, to get it to stick, it's a powder in the bag. And to get it to really stick to the leaves of the, of the clovers or the dandelions or whatever, um, what I would do is I would turn the sprinklers on first just for like 30 seconds. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And, and you get everything kind of moist. Give it a few minutes, five, 10 minutes, so that's not like wet, wet. Sure. And then when you're spreading the fertilizer out, that dust sticks to the leaves. Nice, and it nice. really gets that trimac on there, and in my opinion, it seemed to do it um, a little. It looked, seemed to work exactly, better. and that's a trip trick. I really don't uh, don't really know much about, so thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, it's it's something you can also buy it uh, by itself, and um, you, what you can do is it's called uh, Weed Be Gone, and there's no fertilizer. So that way, you can get a bag of fertilizer, do your fertilizing, get your measurements, get your routine going. And instead of changing fertilizers sure. twice, twice a year, break out the, the Weed Be Gone, which is Trimac by itself with no fertilizer. It's a spray. So now you don't have to do that thing I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was going to say, they make a water-soluble one type yeah. of thing and that's liquid. so you liquid. put that in a sprayer. And, and what you can do, too, is you can go heavier oh, on the areas that have the more dense weeds or like the yeah. patches of clover. Yeah. Well, you can't put a bunch of, tri of Trimac mixed with fertilizer and then you'll burn the grass. Cause exactly. The more chemical you're putting, the more fertilizer. So I actually like it better by itself. And, and it's really and not that expensive either. No. For just the Trimic alone, you're looking at something under $20 and that bottle will last you a good couple seasons. Yeah, it really will. And um, most of the chemicals that I've hung on to and then it's past seemingly like their expiration, whatever, they still work, you know. And so I'd rather, I like to use them up rather than throw them away or try to take them down what I do with these, you know, these chemicals. So yeah. Anyway, we're running out of time. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for coming in, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And um, you can always reach us on the web. We're Chaparral Pavers. Look us up at uh, I love to come home.com. And on Twitter at I Love to Come Home. You can give us a call 805 588 6917. We'll see you next time. This has been Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers. 
go to ilovetocomehome.com to find out more or call 805-588-6917. And be sure and tune in next week at this same time for Patio Side Chat here on ASMA.